Hello guys, I'm Kelsey and in this tutorial we are going to be talking about animation and the character I'm using in this video is Sasuke from Boruto and I read him using the Rigify album. So animation is a process of bringing the character to life and a lot of people tend to avoid this aspect of training because it they take it as it's difficult and it's time consuming. Yeah, I won't like it's actually challenging. I won't say difficult. And it's time consuming in the sense that you have to keep tweaking your character until it, it appears satisfactory in your eyes because a lot of people will still see your work and criticize, oh this is not looking this or is the anticipation is not good enough and stuff. But yeah. At the end of the day, what matters is you're satisfied with your work, unless you're actually going into the field. So I'm going to be talking a lot about posing and the principles of animation. And one more thing I want to remind people about when they are going into animation is they tend to forget a lot about the shoulder joint, which is a very important joint when you come where you come into upper parts of the body because a lot of people forget this when they're animating the hand and the shoulder the chest so because if you don't get a very good pose with the shoulder joint your hand animation is going to look very old and most times when i animate i always tend to use myself as the reference, as the real life reference. I can put myself in that position and ask, okay, is it possible for me to stay in this way and still have balance? So that is a very, very important thing, question you have to ask yourself every time you're going into animation because if you feel that position is not going to be balanced for you to be in for a while, then that means that position can't actually work out. Also, when you're admitting, you have to take note of the center of gravity because if your center of gravity is off, then your admission is going to look up. So, center of gravity and the shoulder joint. These are two very neglected parts. Also, another part I was looking at is the neck joint too. It's also neglected a lot by novice animators. Because if you're trying to move the head, like you're trying to look down like to your feet, the neck has to move. But most people just move the head and that's it. They don't see the weird deformation that is happening in the neck. I, myself, I actually made such mistake a lot of times. Like if you look at my previous animations, you would see that although it wasn't that visible, you will see that too. So the neck and the shoulders are two very important parts. If you want to animate your character and make it perfectly well, then I'm going to talk about squash and stretch. Squash and stretch is one of the two principles of animation. It's people who have actually gone for animation classes or have watched while it's all principles of animation would have seen the bouncing ball video. It is a very good representation of the squash and stretch. So when you learn the principle of squash and stretch, your animations will tend to look more fluid and look more alive, not robotic. Yeah. And also, one more thing is being able to distinguish when to use IK and FKs. Those two tools have their various uses. You don't use IK when to use FK. It's going to make your work a lot difficult. IKs are more like they help to plant the feet and the hands at various positions 
while the FK tends to help you be fluid with its weight ever you move a selected bone in which they are created to directly or indirectly. One more thing, when you are trying to animate an anime character, I actually noticed that using a smaller focal length tends to give your animation that anime character effect or look. So you can give your your camera a focal length of 15 millimeters or 10 or 20 depending on it. And in this video, I didn't really have a plan for the animation or just working with it and seeing where it is taking me to apparently. One more advice I will give to the novice animators or those who are still learning are uh, when you animate your characters. I am usually fond of or rather I in fact I'm fond of rendering it out in the viewport mode and seeing how it looks where the time and spacing are actually okay before I start moving forward with other poses. So that would give me an insight of, oh, this is how your animation is going to look at the ending of the video or where you render it out. So always render out your animation. If you don't really have a very fast system, that will give you a very good result when you're playing your video in the viewport. So I always advise you guys to render your animations out. Viewport render when you're animating so I can get an idea of how your your video or your animation is going to look like when it's being rendered finally. So you see me rendering out the viewport, rendering it out in the viewport a lot and checking out whether the poses are actually okay or not. So this is more like the blocking stage of the animation. So it isn't going to look nice. It's going to look robotic and it's going to look so stiff. But the final, but the final video, you will see how fluid and lifelike she looks. Like I said, I actually did a lot of acting when I was making this video. Like I jumped around and showed myself, okay, if he puts his hand in this position, will he be more balanced when he lands? Or he keeps his hands far apart, will he be more balanced when he lands? Is his head going to face down? Is, is he going to be on his toes? So I did a lot of research on myself while i was making or animating this so it actually took a lot of time like the main video is about an hour and 45 minutes but because of length purposes and no no one would have the patience to actually watch an hour of me tweaking taking back and forth so i had to speed it up so that people can actually follow through and understand what's going on there.
So right here, I finally decided to give him some clothes. I was tired of seeing his nakedness. So I'll still tweet more video. And one more thing I'd like to also talk about is timing and spacing. They are very fundamental and very important in animation. Timing and spacing has to be has to be looked very well into for you to give out the correct output of your animation unless it's going to look very odd so if you're going for a fight scene or anything that needs a very quick action the timing between two or the spacing rather between two keyframes should be very little and also, another thing I want to talk about is FPS, that is frames per second. It's very important. If your FPS is much like 60, 120, you have to give it enough spacing. So your spacing will actually be determined by your FPS. So the higher the FPS, the more the spacing, the lower the FPS, the lesser the spacing. So if you're going for a 12 FPS, that is 12 frames in each second, you have to go for very close and packed keys. But if you're going for a bigger FPS, you have to go for more spaced keys because if they are closely packed, if the action is going to be too fast as your eye might not be able to even pick it up. But you're going to also Bigger FPS gives you a smoother animation. Although I decided to actually animate this character in tools, not in ones, because most anime movies are animated in tools. It gives you this hanging light or laggy like animation, just like into the spider bath and across the spider bath. So this would be all for the landing animation of Sasuke. So this is going to be part one of the animation tips. Do well to like, subscribe and share to your friends if this tutorial was helpful. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Peace out.